Hi, my name is Reggie with Project Generation D, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Ableton Live um, for live hip hop sets, whether it's you know playing beats for an artist on stage or doing instrumental sets, things like that. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do um, is actually when you create your beats in Ableton Live, is, and if you're going to use a performance controller such as the APC 40 or the APC 20 or Novation Launchpad, something like that you're going to want to organize your beats for performance. So um, this is just kind of how I do mine and everybody does theirs in a different way, but I'll basically separate each one of my elements um, in, into a track or a scene. So if I wanted to launch like my main sample, oops, let me stop all those, just do one here. Uh, I can launch that sample if I want to do a whole scene. that okay so I have the um, APC 40 hooked up right now so what I what I do personally is I I'll create a rack um, drop some effects down here in my master track so I have a beat repeat and I have that you know configured to a knob I have this fade out configured to a knob right down here at the bottom then I also have these lows mids and highs so if I play the beat So basically I can do a lot of cool stuff while performing the set live. Also I have this track right here, um, this FX tracks, and I did a, a drum rack. So I have a whole bunch of different different sound effects and drum kits hooked up to that. So if I want to play a beat and break it down, I can like add some drums in or whatever I want to do. Now to get your sessions into into Ableton Live that you already have, what you want to do is flat freeze and flatten all your tracks, all your scenes in Ableton Live. So when you drag in a new set, which I'm going to actually drag in down here and I had deleted it so I'm just going to drag it back in here. But when you drag it in, everything will be organized for you and then you can just group the tracks and play them like it was in the original Ableton Live set to begin with. So I'm going to drag this beat in. We'll let it load up for a second. And while it's loading, I'll talk about this. Um, one one good thing to help, you might want to color code and, of course, label each one of your master scenes so you know that when you're in a certain beat of a certain color, you know, like I have my intro, my hook, my different verse parts, I have different instruments playing um, throughout the verse in different ways. So each one of those represents that. So if I scroll down to where I just dropped that beat in to scroll over, I can use, I can launch. So I have my beat in there. Now, like I said earlier with the grouping, you don't really want to have all of these tracks because it's going to take up a lot of real estate on your screen. And if you're performing, you know, you you don't want to waste too much time trying to cycle through everything. So one one easy thing to do that's, that can alleviate that problem and keep you organized is to just select all your tracks. Um, I just selected my first track, went to the end, held down shift and clicked on it. And now they're all highlighted across the top. So what I'll do is I can right click or you can do um, Command G on the Mac or Control G on the PC, um, group the tracks. So once they all group, I can launch basically all of these through the master or through this group and I can also turn down and turn down the volume on that track as well. Now this particular beats around 88 so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, put 88 first so I know that where my tempo's at and I'll then I'll just name the beats shut them down and I can minimize that so I want to, you know, when I'm performing, if I'm going to go in there and launch individual scenes and add stuff in, I can do that. Or if I just want to launch the whole section, the intro or the hook or whatever the case may be, I can do that as well. Um, another cool thing that I did with the custom mapping is I set my tempo to a knob. 
So what I can do, instead of having to come up here and click or drag and change the tempo, I can simply just turn a knob and dial in the tempo or close to the tempo that I want that way. So basically, once you have that all done, you can go through and just play your beats. And you can, you know, you can do it. You can build in transitions in here. You can use sound effects or like... Just anything like that, real cool, real cool stuff in between, you know, the end of beat or the start of beat with. You can also, um, you know, create different drum loops and whatnot to transition beats directly into each other. So for this beat I'm about to play, you know, I just dial my tempo. I know it's 82, so I get close to 82. Um, I can open it up. And then I can don't even have to really look at the screen because I know how my beat's set up and I can start playing beats um, through my controller. <laughs> And that's pretty much how you can, you know, set up your Ableton Live sets to to perform live beats. So um, just a few last minute tips. Just remember to stay organized when you're creating your original beats. So when you drag them in um, to your performance set, you know, it's pretty much straightforward. You know, use your colors, color code, the colors you're going to remember. Use labels to name, um, you know, each each individual part of the beat, like your intros, hooks, verses, etc. And, um, and have fun. Be sure to check out projectgenerationd.com for more videos and tips. Um, this is Reggie Perry, and you guys have a good one. Happy beat making.